Wages World here. It is uh, April 29th, and I'm going to come at you really quick here. Um, we've had a couple things going on here that I really want to report to you. Um, we had a crazy-looking uh, earthquake happen in Cuba. It was uh, it came in on the, at the European Agency as a 6.6, but the USGS has it at a 4.5. That's like a huge difference, okay? Um, but we are having, at least at the very least, we're having a swarm of earthquakes in Cuba there uh, on the southern end. And, you know, yesterday I seen some crazy electrical anomalies happening down in that area with our geoelectric map that I show you guys all the time with, the you know, how it affects our grid, our electrical grid, space weather. Um, I've seen some ball shapes down in the southeast. Now, last night I, I didn't report on it because I was assuming that it was from those uh, massive storms we had down there. Um but the signature I was seeing was not localized. It was a decent sized circle, a decent, another decent sized circle, all the way from like Louisiana down into Florida, diff three different circles. Now I couldn't see down in uh, Cuba because that map doesn't show us that. It's just the United States. So um, something could have happened there to cause any of that. But the fact is when the two agencies, the earthquake agencies like that, the European one and USGS disagree in such a grand way. Um, and, you know, I guess it could be the Euro European agency could have made a mistake. That's happened before. Or, and we know USGS downgrades automatically, but not usually 2.1 points on the Richter. That's a huge difference, guys. Huge. So we'll keep an eye on that and see what's going on with that. But we've had a, a flare CME type of thing happen around this sunspot. Okay, um, it's real easy to see. Watch, it's gonna right about there. Boom. Okay, I'll show it to you on the other angstrom 171 because it's really evident there. But we also had, um, at the same time that that sunspot did that, we had a little bit of a ejection down here too. Now, I, I think these are related because they were pretty much all at the same time. And um, we see that sometimes. Okay, sometimes we'll see a, a flare like over here and then it'll kind of you know, go across, and then we'll have an ejection somewhere else, fairly close by. Sometimes it's, it's a good distance, but there's also another possibility. There could have been a filament right here that we couldn't see that was connected to this sunspot all the way over to here, and it just gave us the visual appearance of a very, you know, two separate uh, events. But I don't think that's what happened. I think this was probably all related to the same thing. Um, so I'm going to take you to the 171 because it is easier to see. But I wanted to show it to you in a couple different angstroms because it gives us a different view. Okay, here's the 171, guys. Um, it's real evident on the 171, okay? Right there. See that? I mean, that's a pretty decent-sized explosion off the sun. Um, so what I think's going on is I think we probably had like a, a smaller flare than a subsequent cme that happened right behind it at the same spot which we see that a lot they didn't used to differentiate between cme and solar flare either guys they used to just call it one thing and that was it okay but now they they know with you know more technology and stuff and we're more visible here but what i want to point out is that this is we can see this on our side the earth facing disc okay now when, the, when we say disc, it's just because the sun looks like a disc on this on this tool. So, it's not too far from center disc, which means it's pretty much looking right at us. Okay, it's a little off to the center as we can see there. But if you look, not only does, when that thing, you know, does its thing, you can see a faint, like, eruption even out about that far. So, you know, is this thing going to come at us? I can't say for sure. The flare, if it did come at us, is already here and gone. Okay, it gets here and gone in roughly eight minutes. Just saying. That's how fast they travel. So what I think is happening here is I think we had a smaller flare and then a bigger CME behind it. Because you can see how big that that was right here. And that doesn't look to be too much connected to this, uh, like directly connected to this sunspot. Now, 
the sunspot doing its thing right here probably did cause this part of the sun to react. Okay? It's probably related in that way, but I don't think that these things were, you know, like, what I'm saying is I don't think it was one big huge filament. Alright? Now keep in mind, like I said yesterday, our object is on that side of the sun right now. So, you know, we got to keep that in mind always. But, so, you know, so we're going to look at uh, space weather. I'm going to take you guys over there and I'll show you seeds real quick. Okay, guys, this is space weather. Um, I do got my uh, phone in reverse mode, basically dark mode. I'm just, it's easier for me to read. That's why I do that. I'm getting old. My eyes are bad. <laughs> but after looking at this now, I do think that what I just said is probably what happened. Okay, um, this is the x-ray flux. And, you know, with the sunspots being on that front disc facing us, the baseline of the x-ray flux will go up. Okay, so it's hanging out in about A range, A class flare, A range. Now, but what we're seeing is right here, see that spike? So, and that's a very, very small one, I have to say. It's, it may be very, very low B class flare type of energy here. But the CME behind this flare is really what looked pretty impressive. Um... You know, if we go down here and look, it doesn't look like we reacted geomagnetically, hardly at all. So that would be consistent with a small, small flare. Um, also, right here, why I got you right here, I wanted to show you this. I'm not sure if that's going to be actually classified as a sunspot. But if that's the case, we, get, we, had, we would have had three active sunspots, you know, on our side here. Um, again, I don't know. I haven't really looked and see if there's any, uh, sunspots behind, underneath that active area yet. But, um, I wanted to bring you guys this flare first. And seeing me, I guess we could just go ahead and say that. So we look at this stuff here. Uh, the yellow is the, it's the velocity. Okay. The yellow is the velocity. And then we got the orange, which is the density. Now we have to look over here, guys, at the range. This is 0 to 1. Not a very big range. So the density is essentially almost the same across the board here. But we're seeing this crazy looking straight line stuff. I think this is most likely, you know, because it's so low. It's not varying very much at all. I've seen this happen before. Now, we go down here and look at the time frame. We're looking at between, you know, um... Well, they just updated that. 7 to 9 right here. So we'll, we'll scroll up and look and see if we see anything. We don't see anything there. So I, I don't think that, you know, space weather-wise, that flare had much to do, much to say to us, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, but the CME behind it most definitely could be coming our direction. Okay, guys, I got you over at Seeds. Now, um, obviously, I showed you a CME yesterday, right? And... Um, this most definitely looks like something's going on. This is our view, okay? Satellites here looking this way. So this looks like it's going this way. That part does. Um, but, you know, like I explained yesterday, that might not be the case. Also, if you look close, you can see down here that we see like a jet of energy get shot from behind the occulter. That would lend to the fact that this thing is coming at least partially in our direction. Now, we don't know for sure yet, okay? And I can't, I'm not going to be able to tell you for sure yet until we get the models updated and see what happens. Um, but, yeah. So, I'm going to take you over to Stereo A and show you that one because it gives us a side view. Okay, guys. Um, obviously, you can see it here. All right? The view we're looking at, you know, the Earth's over here. Stereo A is over here looking at the sun. Okay, so this is our side view, and if we look here, you can see, obviously, CME flare type of uh, situation going on here. Not necessarily a flare, because it's not moving that fast. I think this is more of a CME. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but that most definitely came from that sunspot, which is exactly what I've been talking about here for about a week now. That we got to pay attention to it if it's earth facing because our um, magnetic field is weaker than what it, it typically is, about 
And that's significant, guys. That's one-fifth, if you actually think about it. So, you know, most likely we'll be able to defend this off pretty well. Um, it doesn't look like we had much of an effect from that small little flare that happened as this CME was happening also. But, um, I did want to bring that to you real quick. And, um, guys, uh, yeah, that earthquake thing is kind of strange. It really is. Now, the magnetosphere tools, um, I went and looked at one of them. And the density on that one went from, like, no density to pretty high and you can see it going across the screen. It changed pretty abruptly. Um, I don't think it's from this. But it might be just from some solar wind that was already on its way. Not really sure yet. But that was happening also. Um, also guys, before I get you off here, we had a Schumann spike. Another one. So let me show you that real quick. So there you go guys. I mean, look at that. Okay. Again, like I said yesterday, see the pulsing going on? Where it's just, you know, not as long duration before it goes back to normal. And I explained this yesterday in my video. You know, we got these dead spots in between here. So it's acting as if it's a pulse. And this one's doing something similar. Okay. Um, so whatever's going on here is what's going on. And we'll talk about this at greater length probably later on tonight. Um, but... That's, you know, another spike. Now, it did not start at 10 o'clock, so we can't say that that's part of that either. Um, we got to, you know, keep it real on that end of it. I'm not going to say it's, <laughs> you know, some people would just go ahead and just ignore that and not even mention it. I'm going to mention it to you guys because that's what I do. You know, if it's not, if it, just because it doesn't fit into my theory doesn't mean I'm not going to tell you what it is. And so this is not fitting into what I was saying about the 10 o'clock thing. And that could be over. I don't know. I'm just saying that these two uh, spikes here um, do not fall into that 10 o'clock start pattern I was seeing. So, anyway, guys, um, I'm going to end it here. Um, I'll, I'll give you more updates later on tonight. You know, the earthquake thing is really, really strange that those agencies are not even close to one another with the strength of that quake. Um, I would imagine one of them is going to have to come out with some sort of a correction at some point. It doesn't, you know, I think there were some reports from some articles that, you know, people were reporting in like there might have been some damage or whatever. And it was real shallow. It was almost on the surface. So, <laughs> that, that's a whole other conversation also. Anyway, guys, God bless. Have a great day. Yeshua saves and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.